is going on people of YouTube? My name is Mikoya, welcome back to a brand new video. And today, day late, I admit, welcome back to Game Week 13 Preview. Now, reason for it is that my PC is just not playing ball at the moment. One day it's working, next minute it's not working. So I'll have to cool down, I've come back, Bob's your uncle, it's fine again. But I really need to try and find what the problem is. And until I do, I might have some videos here, I might have some videos there. And the fact I'm working a um, decent amount of overtime, it's tough at the moment. It's very tough. But welcome back to a brand new video. And today we have got my predictions and my thoughts and my you know tips for the next game week, starting as always with our games to watch. And we're going to start with Leicester versus Middlesbrough. A game I think could surprise a few people. Middlesbrough looked good against Chelsea. It's just that Chelsea's defence is looking pretty formidable itself at the moment. And Leicester, on the other hand, need a performance because they are slipping further and further down the table. Another loss um, could be on the cards for them, though. Middlesbrough looked good. But then again, I do think Leicester could scrape this by a goal or two. I just don't know what's going to happen. It's such an interesting game. And we've got Chelsea versus Spurs. Six games without conceding a goal, and uh, Spurs are still undefeated. For me, one of them is going to lose their record of Ruby Spurs' unbeaten run, or Chelsea's goalless um, conceding run. Uh, could also be a nil-nil, um, but I do think one of them is going to come to an end. Then Man United versus West Ham. West Ham, just it's, nothing seems to go their way. You know, they're looking good one game, a hurricane blows them away, so you never know what you're going to get. And for Man United... You never know what you're going to get, and that's why I've put that as my games for watching. Finally, Southampton versus Everton. Sort of the, the two outside the top six slash seven now teams, or well, six, I don't count Leicester anymore, top six teams uh, that you think are going to be like seventh and eighth. Could challenge for maybe fifth and sixth, who knows. But two teams, I think, could do a win. Not been too good recently, and I feel like, you know, both teams will be looking, especially considering they're basically positional rivals, to get the three points in that one. First up is our tip of the week. Strange we start with that, but I thought it's you know not positional, so let's get it out of the way. Tip of the week, FPL Gardens gives us his tip of the week every single week. If you want more of his tips, and trust me, he's bloody brilliant at them. Go and follow his Twitter. It'll be in the description, and yeah, it's well worth a follow. He started, I think, this year in 2016. Has already gained about 1,650 followers, which is mental. Um, so it's proof that you know. His pudding is tasting quite nice. I'm not very good at, you know, sort of elaborative ways of saying they're good. Anyway, his tip of the week today, the reason it's a style, because it's a general one. He says tip of the week is a more general one. Not to get drawn in by players who have had one or two game weeks. Top point scoring goalkeeper was Federici, not first choice. Defender was Ake, also not first choice. Yaya Torre, better options in his price range, especially given Sig Gerdson. And Anichibi, never been prolific in his career. I'm not saying don't transfer in these players, but be aware they may not provide consistent point returns. It provides, it, it's a very good point. It's something that I made on yesterday's video on FP, my um, hashtag uh, FPL season, I believe it was. Um, you, you look at Anichibi, you know, he's cheap, he's scoring goals at the moment. But in his career, the most he's scored is six in a whole season. So he's halfway for his total. If he scores a hat-trick in the next game week, get him out. Get him out. His, his, his scoring is done. Uh, but it's a very, very good point. Don't get drawn in by one or two good game weeks. So the price rise could be there. I have done that with Gundogan, and now he's not playing. But it's worth noting that these are definitely good points. If you want more of them, follow his Twitter. It's on the screen. It's also in the description. Yeah, let's move on with the video. Starting off with my goalkeeper this week is Petr Cech. Now, Arsenal have not been their clean sheet ways this season. Neither has any team. It's been a very high scoring season, but Arsenal have not been themselves when it comes to, you know, keeping clean sheets. But I feel like Petr Cech at £5.5 .5 million is definitely probably your second best bet at the moment. Courtois is easily out in front. Um, although I believe Cech is still a better goalkeeper. Arsenal this week have a struggling Bournemouth side that are just seem to, you know, don't seem to be hitting the net as often as they would be in the past. And I think Arsenal capitalise on that. Put up a good defensive performance. And I think Czech will get a clean sheet. Then we've got Claudio Bravo of Manchester City away against Burnley. Although teams have struggled going to Burnley. I do believe Man City will have the sort of the philosophy that they'll go there. Almost like the Man United game, except they might score one, probably two. I'm going for like a 2-0. Um, can kind of clean sheet. Burnley will sit back, but won't get hurt them on the counter. But yeah, I think Man City will just scrape a win. Clean sheet nonetheless for Bravo. Then we've got £4.4 million Zeela, 
There's going to be playing, I think, at least four game weeks now because Schmeichel will be out for at least four of them. And Leicester play against Middlesbrough. And as I said, it could be a strange game. I feel like Leicester maybe could take it with a clean sheet and just a goal or two. But who knows? Um, I'm putting him in there just because he's £4, £4 million. Pounds, and he could get a few clean sheets looking at the um, you know, fiction that's coming up for Leicester. Tough in some games, good on the others. And lastly, uh, Mr. Ben Foster. Now, he's in my team. Yep, and I had Heaton. I chose to start Heaton. Heaton got zero. Foster got six. Foster this week, though, if you're looking at their fixture, has Hull. And Hull are struggling, so Ben Foster looks a really good bet. Next up, we've got the defenders. And once again, I am extremely sorry. I want to apologise for constantly um, bumming this one player. But Marcus Alonso. He is a player that, you know, as I put my opinions on the thing, and there'll be more of that when I get time, but... I put my opinions on there, on the internet, and I have to say I apologise for some of them. Some of them I do get wrong. Alonso being one of them. When he transferred to Chelsea, I thought it was strange. He wouldn't get much playing time. He just could be a new Baba Raman, play for a few games, get, you know, pulled out to the loan system for the rest of his days as a footballer. He's doing quite well. Chelsea, I feel like I get a clean sheet against Spurs. If I'm going with my gut. I think they're going to get a clean sheet. So for that, I'm saying selected, you know, just by a minimal amount of people. I think just over the differential range uh, is definitely worth it. If you want a more differential um, defender and David Luiz, I was going to put him on differentials and my okay, game well this game week because he is he was 6.0 check today. He's 6.1. So yeah, David Luiz also could be a good option. Any Chelsea defender could be a good option. They're all 6.1 million pounds. Then we've got Nathaniel Klein who's gone up as well, 5.6 million pounds. This is the Liverpool midfielder and um, defender. Sorry, um, but he comes in, going at Sunderland, I feel like could get a clean sheet, maybe not because Sunderland likes to score, Liverpool likes to concede. However, he looked good on the attack against Southampton despite not getting a goal or assist. Um, I feel like if you know they're going to concede quite a lot, Sunderland, Klein also could get on the action. And we've got Jenkinson, reason being he's a cheap way into the Arsenal defence for at least the next few game weeks as Bellerin is out for the foreseeable, I believe, three or four game weeks, so... That looks good for him. Then we've got John Stones. Again, it's a risk to have a Man City defender in there. but And also, John Stones didn't play. So that's a really weary one. Fingers crossed he can play, but £5 million to get you into the City defence. I think they could be improving from now. Um, but, yeah, City's always going to be a strange one. And then we've got Mr. Fuchs of Leicester. He's probably the most, I think he's the most expensive Leicester defender, but he gives you an attacking you know, reign as well as a defensive one. I think Leicester <coughs> could get. A few goals, maybe a clean sheet, who knows, and I apologise for the cough. Lastly, Chris Brunt. Now, there are cheaper West Brom defenders. McCauley, for some reason, keeps on going up, or kept, kept on going up. You've also got Neom, who's playing quite a few games, and £4.3 million. Pounds. And Johnny Evans also, I believe, is the back of them four. Uh, I believe there might be Craig Dawson in there as well. But there's a fifth defender in Brunt, because he plays in left wing. Now, if they can start, you know, shutting up shop, like the Pulis you know, of old um, did. And also scoring goals like they have been. They've scored just one less than Manchester United this season. Brunt could get in the action defensively for a clean sheet. And also attacking because he's in left wing spot. So definitely, definitely worth bringing in. 4.9 million pounds from midfielder playing in defence I think is an absolute bargain. Well, my, my, my have I waffled on this video. As we go on to midfielders, we haven't got many left. We've only got five midfielders and four attackers, I know. It's very, very, uh, you know, low numbers this week. But Sigurdsson comes in for Swansea. Swansea have a game against Crystal Palace. And I do think Sigurdsson's probably their best player at the moment. One they can really hinge their hopes on. And if anything's going to go into the net, it will be through Sigurdsson, uh, from Sigurdsson, to Sigurdsson. That's basically... All I can say about that. Next up, we've got Coutinho and any Liverpool midfielder. Liverpool have got Sunderland's. I mean, you're looking at a cricket score for that one. And, and there's probably going to be not out as well. So, who knows uh, what Liverpool could score in that game. It could be monumentally disruptive for Moyes' uh, you know, two-game winning streak. He's not going to get a third, most definitely. Next up, we've got Kevin De Bruyne. Man City player. He's grabbing assists and goals. Uh, not on a you know, completely regular basis, but a good enough basis. He's quite expensive, but I feel like if anyone's going to find a way for a very, very tight defence, it's a man with the quality of Kevin De Bruyne. And then Matt Phillips comes up next. West Brom, valued at £5.1 million. And I do believe West Brom are going to start improving. Against Hull, they like to concede. West Brom will hopefully get a clean sheet, gives you three points for him. Goal and assist again, maybe. Three games weeks running. That's another at least ten points, so... Yeah, really good game we think could be coming up for Phillips. And lastly, Roberto Pereira, someone that I put my faith in um, at the start. 
He grabbed uh, you know his first three game weeks. I think a goal on two assists or two goals and assist. Went quite a bit. Now he's back, looking good. And Watford play against Stoke. I do feel like Stoke will be a bit wary at the back, but also could be solid. So Roberto Pereira is a bit of a risk. And lastly, they've got the attackers, so I'm really going to speed up on this one. Jermaine Defoe comes in from Sunderland, and yes, Sunderland are going to get smacked by Liverpool, but Defoe will most probably get a goal against a very, very leaky defence. Positive. Rondon, uh, the West Brom man, is absolutely disgusting. Reason being, playing against him would be hell for any defender. Um, you know, how big or how small you are, he's going to absolutely run you ragged. Uh, Darren Fletcher's come out and said he's a main focal point of their team. Obviously, and I feel like he is definitely going to be in the goals against Hull. Maybe assist as well. Who knows? Um, we've also got Mudu Barrow. Bit of a risk um, in the last two. Uh, Mudu Barrow comes in at £5 million. Um, he still seems to be in a favour. I'm not sure how it's going to last. So it's a bit of a risk in that one. But Palace likes to concede goals. And Barrow, I think, could set up a few. Maybe even grab himself a goal this time round. Uh, and lastly, Sergio Aguero. He is a massive risk because I kept him in my team just because I thought he'd do well against Palace, didn't grab a goal or assist. I'm really tempted to keep him in my team this week, hoping, hoping upon hope, he gets something. Uh, but I've got two free transfers. I might use my free transfer and bring in Phillips in. But yeah, Aguero is definitely one to consider. But I say it is a risk. But that is that for this video. Hopefully I've enjoyed it. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe. And who are you bringing in out of anyone I've mentioned or anyone I've missed? Let me know in the comments section down below. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed my season. If you haven't, check it out. My FPL season, I should say. It will be maybe on the screen. Let's say that. Or the start and then the end of the video. Uh, but thank you all for watching. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe. And peace.